Hello, everyone, and welcome to week three of National Engineering Month. I hope you had the opportunity to participate in other National Engineering Month events, and you have two and a half more weeks of activities planned for you, so I encourage you to join. It's my extreme pleasure to be here to introduce this informative event. I am especially excited to hear about the unique learning experience at Conestoga College and how they use project-based learning to effectively develop their engineering students. I am Sandro Prusa. CEO of the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers, or OSPE. For those who don't know who we are, let me take a minute to introduce ourselves. OSPE is a home of the entire engineering community in Ontario, which includes professional engineers, engineering graduates, and engineering students, where they come together to realize their full potential. We are the only engineering association in Ontario that truly includes everyone from every background and from every discipline. OSPE engages, educates, and enables the engineering community to lead in order to help create a better future for our profession and for society at large. So I encourage you to join OSPE. It's free for students. Go to ospe.on.ca and explore all the benefits of belonging to a great association that brings together great people to do great things. And speaking of great people doing great things, look no further than the students and faculty at Conest uh, Conestoga College School of Engineering and Technology. Now, one of the biggest challenges I hear from engineering employers is that of all the engineering graduates that they interview, uh, they all have a deep understanding of engineering theory needed to do their job, but actually few have the practical application of this theory needed to be, quote, job ready. And when you hear about the engineering gap, the engineering job gap, this is exactly what they're talking about. Well, I think Conestoga has done a great job of closing this gap with their unique approach to project-based learning. So what exactly is project-based learning and how are the many ways this is applied to Conestoga? Well, that's what you're gonna hear about all today. I gotta also mention my great friend, Executive Dean Tony Doma has done an exceptional job of promoting the great accomplishments of his students, his faculty and his alumni. And fair warning, if you ever talk to Tony about his future plans for Conestoga, make sure you set aside quite a few hours for the conversation. He has a lot to talk about. So without any further delay, I pass this on to Thomas. Thank you. Perfect, thank you, Senator. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Engineering Month presentation on project-based learning. Today, we'll discuss what project-based learning is uh, and the benefits of this teaching method, as well as the other ways students can gain relevant uh, experience at the post-secondary level. Uh, we will conclude this session with the Q&A period, so please uh, save your questions till the end, and please note that session is being recorded. So my name is Thomas Radman. I'm joined by my classmate, Matthew Armstrong. Uh, I'm the president of the Conestoga Engineering Society, and Matthew is our vice president internal. Uh, today, Matthew and myself, uh, we are hosting this seminar from the Waterloo region, we acknowledge that we and much of the Conestoga community are located on the Haldeman Tract, land promised to the Haudenosaunee people of the Six Nations, which includes six miles on each side of the Grand River. This territory is a traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral peoples. We recognize that you are all attending this Zoom session from a diverse range of locations. We encourage you to learn about the traditional lands you are located on across Canada and the world. And without further delay, we'll begin with our session. So to start, we'll take a quick look at uh, what briefly takes place on campus and what these uh, Bachelor of Engineering degrees at Conestoga are all about.
so those are some of the opportunities uh, available on campus with these degrees. Um, as we all know, though, um, we've been remote or hybrid recently. So here is a brief day in the life of what uh, most students may have been experiencing these past couple of years. Hey Google, good morning. Hi Thomas. The time is 9.08 a.m. Currently in Kitchener, it's minus one degree and cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of four and a low of minus six. There are five entries today. Here are the first three. At 8 a.m., you have fluids. Then at 9 a.m., you have year four project. After that, at 11 a.m., you have fluids. Have a nice day. So fortunately, we are looking toward uh, to hybrid and back to in-class learning in the coming future. So uh, the online days are maybe not totally behind us, but uh, our current reality as it is. But, oh dear. But today we're speaking about the project-based learning that does take place at Conestoga. And if you are wondering what project-based learning is, it is a system where all of the class topics are combined into one large project and it is term long and uh, it gives students that long term engagement with the content to be able to solve complex problems. So by working in groups, they really develop those team skills, communication skills, uh, critical analysis and problem solving to be able to uh, gain those skills that are very relevant when it comes to joining the workforce uh, after graduating. So to elaborate more on that, uh, we have a member of our faculty here, Professor Tim Union, who will uh, discuss more about the project-based learning at Conestoga. All right, thank you very much, uh, Tom. Um, I'm coming from you from the uh, robotic welding lab, so I do apologize for the humming noise that everyone hear. Um, is everyone hearing me okay? I just also share my screen is that visible to everyone at this point. Just give me a thumb up. All right, thank you. All right, again, uh, my name is Tan Nguyen. I'm a faculty with mechanical system engineering program at the School of Engineering and Technology, Conestoga College. Just give you a quick fact here. Conestoga College is the only Ontario college that have accredited engineering degree program. And I believe we are one of the first two colleges in Canada that actually have accredited engineering degree program. So very often people ask me, what is engineering? Well, my answer to them is basically engineering is an applied science. What we do as an engineer is that we utilize the fundamental math the fundamental science, the engineering science, and we use all of that knowledge to solve and to overcome technical challenge as well as social challenge that we face every day. Now, to further that, to further the applied aspect of, the, of engineering, most of engineering program in Canada have cooperative education, is a cooperative education. What it means is that every student have a chance to actually go to work in an engineering environment, use their knowledge, use their understanding and help to solve these problems. Now what, what project-based learning is about is that we're going to bring that beyond just the work term. We like to bring some of that, that idea, some of that application back into the class during the study term. So, Project-based learning is basically what you have it on one side, 
you have your regular academic courses. This is where you would learn the engineering theory, the engineering fundamentals. And with project-based learning, what we do is we ask you to take those theory, take those fundamental, and apply them in a year-long project. And by successfully complete the project, you basically demonstrate that you have mastered the learning outcome, you have, under, you have your, the understanding of the theory, you have the understanding of the engineering principle to enable you to solve these particular problem. So just give you an example of a first year um, mechanical system engineering, engineering program. So when you look at the first year, we have a first year project that goes through the entire two term. Now, as you can see, in that first year, there's a number of course that you have to take everything like fundamental math, like algebra, calculus, the science, chemistry, physics, the engineering science, strand of material, strand of material, material fluid power, uh, material science. So all of these courses that you take, you learn the fundam fundamental math, the fundamental science, the fundamental engineering principles. And then what we do, we take those things and the student will apply them in the project where there's a number of tasks that they had to complete. So basically, the project allow them a chance to apply the theoretical knowledge in an actual engineering related projects. Now, in addition to that, every task that the student involved with, they work in a group, a project group, and for every single task that we typically have a project task leader who main responsibility is to complete the task on time. So to do that, they're given the responsibility of allocate the personnel, allocate the resort, make the final decision, all the administrative duty, including performing evaluation. So basically we give the task leader the ability to manage the team and, and manage the engineering projects. So throughout the project itself, the student able to apply their various engineering theory principle and principles. They gain practical engineering experience. They're able to manage engineering projects and team. They're able to communicate and document some of their engineering work. And more importantly, they're able to identify the social implication of their engineering work and how does that affect the public, the society, or even you know, their teammates in general. So that's basically a just very brief overall look of project-based learning, specifically applied to the project-based learning in mechanical system engineering program at Conestoga College. So I'm going to pass it back to Tom. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tan. All right. I should be sharing again. All good for everybody. Perfect. All right. So going off what Tan was speaking about, uh, uh, we'll just highlight some of the year projects uh, we've completed in the past. Uh, so starting in the top left, this is our first year project. This is actually the first year project I worked on. Uh, you build a robotic arm and like that uh, display Tam had with the all the various courses that go into the first year project, uh, the fluid power, the statics, the materials, those all had assignments that contributed to that. And at the end of the term, we demonstrated our uh, arms to the whole class and uh, everybody was able to evaluate how well their, uh, their projects turned out. So if I recall correctly, we were having some troubleshooting issues with our uh, pneumatic fluid power system. So we we're just working that through before we went into our uh, demonstration. And then this group, uh, they had a very good working arm. So this is, this is, you'll see the task that the uh, 
ours are meant to do. So we had different metal plates that had different cutouts. So using our calculus course, we found the center of mass and where the uh, plates would balance. So when they'd be placed on top of each other, they would uh, balance. So as you can see, the plates were placed on each other offset, but because we knew where the center of mass was on the plates, it didn't tip either way. Um, as you can see, it's not the uh, most exact system. It's, uh, it was a little uh, rough, as, as my classmate said, it wasn't quite working that round, but uh, that is the gist of that. And then these next two clips, uh, Matthew will speak about our third year project we completed last year. Thank you, Thomas. So yeah, in our third year, Thomas and I were in the same project group and we were tasked with design and build of a double inverted pendulum. And this is basically a, a self-balancing system. So some of the components were purchased such as the motors and the belt drive like seen in the uh, first video there that Thomas has. And then some of the other components like the links and the connections to the belt drive were actually machined by our project group on campus with the uh, machine shop at the Cambridge campus. Yeah, so that video there just shows how we got it going back and forth along the belt drive. And then the picture on the right shows two of the links in one of the balance positions. And those are the links that uh, we machined ourselves at said uh, machine shop on the Cambridge campus. Thanks, Matt. So yeah, the, though that's a very brief overview. There's a, there's a lot of depth to all these projects and, and the work that comes into them. So that is the, uh, the project-based learning aspect of it. But of course, there's uh, other areas that students have opportunities to uh, gain these similar skills and apply them outside the classroom. Uh, and, and based in the project-based learning, it really helps build that foundation. And these other areas are ways they can exercise that. So the first is, as we mentioned, we are both uh, executive on the Conestoga Engineering Society. Uh, it's a student run group. Um, these societies, all the engineering schools across the country have one as, as it mentions, uh, they are actually a requirement by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board to be a degree granting institution. So not only is it um, a, a group for students, it is, it is a requirement and it really is, um, a good way for students to get involved. Uh, we attend conferences nationally and provincially. We have our provincial partner ESCO and our national partner CFES, who are essentially the uh, provincial and national versions of what we do. They are the collective provincial group of engineering students and national group of engineering students. And we come together throughout the year for conferences, uh, as you can see in the left photo. That was the last conference we were able to go to at Waterloo in 2020. Um, these are great ways to speak to other students, uh, learn about some best practices that maybe they're doing at their society for running events and getting students involved, um, as well as uh, learning things from industry professionals. Uh, so that, that conference to the left, for example, was the Conference on Sustainability and Engineering. Uh, that's a newer addition to the uh, slate of conferences we attend throughout the year. And I think that's a really great, um, great addition to the conferences as it is such a relevant part in uh, the engineering challenges we have in the future. And for the competitions we attend um, annually, there are the, we have our local competition at Conestoga. So we invite students to participate in our competition and the winners of that have the opportunity to, to compete at the Ontario level at OEC. Um, as you can see, myself and Matthew competed in the consulting category at the Ontario level and uh, we placed first this year. So that was a really great accomplishment for our team, for the school. Um, we competed this past weekend at the Canadian engineering competition. And that was a great experience. It was a, definitely a, a much greater challenge than our uh, Ontario uh, competition. Uh, we worked really hard, really proud of our effort. Um, fortunately, we didn't uh, place uh, this year, but the experience was really good. and again, applying those critical thinking skills. We only had about eight hours on Saturday afternoon to uh, take our 
challenge prompt with all the criteria and and work through a fully developed solution with uh, a written report and a presentation as well. So yeah, again, really applying those classroom skills and taking them uh, beyond the classroom and uh, exercising them as well. And moving on from competitions, this is another option that students have to do outside of the classes, and this is design teams. Um, some of the design teams we have to offer at Conestoga include the Baja SAE team, which uh, when we went to Quebec a couple years ago, we ended up placing first in Ontario in one of our first years really running as a whole student group. It was a lot of first and second year students at that point. And then we also went to a SAE sanctioned event in Louisville, Kentucky called Midnight Mayhem. We competed and that is a six hour endurance race. And as part of Baja, as the two pictures on the slide here show, they are mini off-road vehicles that fit one driver and the team is responsible for fully designing these cars and building them with you can purchase some parts and then you take them to these events to compete where you get graded not only on how you perform in the race but your design your report based explaining all your design and your safety ratings and then moving on in a similar fashion with the formula electric sae it runs in a similar fashion to Baja, where it's going to events to compete based on your design your and your performance. But instead of being an off-road vehicle, it is similar to a smaller scaled down F1 car and is fully electric. And then one of the other teams we have at Conestoga is the concrete toboggan team, which I will let Thomas explain a little more on. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, I was a member of the Concrete Toboggan team. Uh, it is one of our newer teams, along with the Formula team. The Baja team is a fairly established team uh, at, at Conestoga, but the, the newer efforts, which have been really good to see uh, students introduced to campus in the Formula Electric and Toboggan. So we went to competition first time in January 2020. Um, that was a really great experience. It was hosted in Toronto. Um, uh, just to briefly describe a concrete toboggan, because I feel like that's the less intuitive of the uh, three listed here. The running surface on the snow has to be concrete, and then it actually looks similar to almost what the, uh, the Baja car is uh, pictured here with a, a roll cage and students need to be seated inside it. So I'll actually go to our next slide here where I have some clips from the competition we went to. Um, so this first clip on the left, you'll see uh, these are essentially the two best toboggans. This was the final race of the day. Um, it came down to, I believe this is Concordia from Montreal and the University of Toronto. So it just really shows um, the, I guess, the level that uh, the design that these uh, toboggans can reach. So as you can see, it's uh, your, your typical uh, tube hill if you go to a tube park, uh, not too dissimilar from Chicopee here in the region. Um, all these toboggans have a functioning braking system. So when they reach that blue zone at the bottom, you see that they have to brake uh, as well as a functional steering system. So it's it's a very involved. Uh, it, it looks simple from the outside, but uh, a, lot, a lot of work goes into these. So those are two, uh, two of the most successful toboggans uh, that year. Uh, this next clip, I'll, I'll preface with that all of the riders were okay, and this is why we go through such stringent safety steps and design when completing these projects. I apologize for the language in that clip. Um, but yeah, um, everybody was okay. And that is why we go through all the safety steps, all the necessary design constraints that these projects need to have so that they are safe. And again, that those are the social implications of our of our engineering design, the, the effect and the safety of the people who will use them uh, so that ideally they don't break in the first place. Uh, moving on to, oh, uh, Matthew, you can be in with here. Yeah, so another great aspect of Conestoga 
is the co-op placements, which they are paid opportunities, which is really nice for some students to be able to gain that real world experience before they graduate, as well as getting an opportunity to make some money during their school. And these lead to a real industry experience that you get to have prior to graduation, which also looks great on a resume. Um, some local companies are usually where a lot of people end up doing their co-ops. I had three co-ops throughout my time here at Conestoga at Tiger Cat Industries. If uh, Thomas wants to just play that first video there. So this video is showing a harvesting head, which I was helping design when, during my time at Tiger Cat. This was the 568. So it cuts down the tree from the base, measures the length that it wants to cut the logs into, and then cuts it off all while the operator is sitting in the nice warm cab while it is freezing cold outside. Uh, so that's just an ex one example of a type of co-op that you can have at Conestoga with your engineering programs. And I'll let Thomas explain a little more about what he did at one of his co-ops. Yeah, so I was at Lock North America, this most recent co-op term back in the fall. Uh, they do plastic injection molding for uh, office chairs. So uh, if you are sitting on uh, an office chair, there is a potential chance that it came through uh, Cambridge here. Um, so I was part of the industrial engineering team. And as part of that group, we were continuously looking throughout the manufacturing area for areas that could be improved. Is there any uh, issues that need to be resolved that maybe couldn't be quickly uh, fixed uh, or had a larger uh, rooted problem to it, we would then investigate it and uh, often uh, come up with an engineered solution to it. So this clip you'll see, um, it's a robotic arm pulling uh, completed parts out of the molding machine. Uh, the issue here was they were very hot coming out of the machine, so they needed to be water cooled. But then after water cooling, the uh, excess plastic was harder to crack off. So the operators were having a hard time breaking it off. So I developed uh, a jig and a hand tool such that the plastic could be placed in the base of the jig and clamped down. And then with a simple leveraging force, uh, the operators can crack it off more easily. And I think just for me personally, kind of being able to work right in these environments, uh, similar to the uh, robotic arm you saw for our first year project, obviously this is a more complicated version of that, but a lot of those things, again, we learn and do in the projects and in our classes, there's so many parallels to uh, the co-op experience we have. And then again, further, uh, we move into our careers. So just briefly, discussed a lot about Conestoga. So why? Um, it, it's the small class sizes are very beneficial, uh, being able to have that close contact time with your professor and just being able to engage the content, uh, the content more. Um, we have regular access to the shops. Uh, all the projects um, are largely made by the students. There are very few components that are either purchased or sourced just due, their, due to their complexity. Um, otherwise, um, by designing the pieces and then going to manufacture them ourselves, we really see what needs to go into those pieces. Um, a lot of students find, and I've, I've had this experience myself, you can design something on a piece of paper and then draw it up in CAD. And when you bring it down to the shop and you're looking at the piece of metal, the uh, manufacturing process you want to do to that maybe isn't uh, feasible based on cuts or geometry you made. So you really realize how, how to design to manufacture some of these things. And yeah, so like we mentioned the paid co-op, um, our, our faculty are excellent. A lot of them come out of industry themselves. So when they're teaching some of these to uh, topics, they're able to share with us their, their own experience and that really connects back to the content as well. And looking at the more specific engineering and technology side that Conestoga has to offer is they have a state-of-the-art facility located in Canada's Technology Triangle here in Wilder Region with our campus just being on in Cambridge just across the highway from the Dune campus. And there's a wide range of high quality programs within the engineering and technology fields that you can take at Conestoga. It has the career-focused education, as we had kind of mentioned before, with the co-ops. 
and how you get to take what you learned in class and put it directly into a real world application. And you get, like I said, the real world practical hands-on learning experiences within both your co-op semesters and your in-class semesters with the project courses. So to go a little more at the program clusters with the wide range of program areas, there's opportunity to explore and expand skills in multiple disciplines with a wide range of credentials from certificates to diplomas, advanced diplomas and degrees, and the ability to bridge from a certificate to a diploma to a degree like I did starting in the mechanical engineering technology diploma and then bridging into the mechanical systems engineering bachelor degree which I am currently in now with Thomas. And lastly, these are just some of the, uh, or not some of these are all of the uh, engineering programs we have on offer currently. Uh, the top four in the list, the building systems, electronic systems, mechanical systems, and power system, those are all currently running. Uh, the power systems and the building systems are the most recent addition. Cyber systems will be beginning this fall. So that is a really uh, interesting addition to the slate of programs we have here at Conestoga. There's also the Applied Technology Honors and the Architecture Project and Facilities Management, as well as the Honors uh, Interior Design degree as well. So to finish off, uh, thank you for attending our presentation today on project-based learning. Um, we would now like to open the floor to questions. Oh, I'll go to the chat. Uh, okay, I've just I'm not seen, oh, this, sorry, it's hard for me to see uh, which. Uh... Just stop yes, sharing, uh, Thomas. I think that's should all I, you need to do. Should I do that? Sure. Okay. Well, I guess uh, prior to that, uh, then I'll, I'll stop sharing to take questions. But then uh, to finish off, then I'd just like to thank all of our sponsors for Engineering Month uh, this year. Oh, yeah. Well, Thomas, Matthew, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. That's great. Oh, thank you, Tony. Yeah, glad we could uh, share this uh, as part of National Engineering Month. All right, let's see what we have. I see a question from Sylvia. If your high school self had to add three more experiences, what would they be? Uh, are, are you able to elaborate like uh, I could like like from the high school level academically or just maybe other experiences going into uh, an engineering program? Something you feel would have prepared you further. Ooh, um, uh, I'll, I'll jump first Matt, uh, if, if you can think if you want to think of something Matt, I would say I think for me, maybe some of the robotics or programming type thing. Um, I know some students in our class, they were part of the um, first robotics competitions at their high school level. So coming into it, they were kind of well-versed with the, some of the electrical systems and putting mechanical components together already. So I think that was, that was really cool to see jumping into the first year project and you already had some, some classmates with that experience. More, more from my side, I just had that kind of natural interest and aptitude toward uh, mechanical engineering itself. So um, I think if, yeah, so if anything, maybe that, um, can you think of anything, Matt? Yeah, um, actually one of the great things my high school did offer was a course that was almost like an introductory to mechanical engineering where you got to see some basic ideas of CAD models and SketchUp messing around with parts on there. Uh, we got to use 3D printers, which was kind of cool just to kind of see that beginning and intro to starting to think about how you design parts for things to be built from them and that little bit of an intro. And then um, one thing I think was really cool was I took a uh, auto course. So like working on cars and stuff in high school, which I think really helped prepare to see things from someone that's working in the in, uh, an industry with their hands on to kind of 
based designs. So it kind of gives you the idea that just because something works in a CAD model doesn't mean it's actually going to work when you put it into real life. So you got to have space for tools to get in, hands to get in. There's nothing worse than trying to loosen a bolt that's hidden behind four other things and you got to reach down three feet. So doing those kind of things just teach you a lot more about the uh, difficulties that maybe a classroom can't teach you. I've just been notified. There's one, there's one more question above I missed from Anna. Um, so uh, is there any suggestions for volunteering? Uh, seems like I wish my course had co-op. So um, I'm not sure about volunteering. I, um, I guess, I, I, again, I would go back to what I mentioned, some of those um, high school, the robotics competitions. Um, I know personally for me, I actually pursued more technical jobs even outside of co-op. Um, and I, some of the higher managers were a little confused. They're like, oh, you don't have a formal co-op. It's like, hey, I, I, uh, if, if you're willing to take me, I'd like to get that experience. Um, and, and I was fortunate enough to be able to do that. I was at a water treatment company uh, after my first first year in the program, which, uh, yeah, like, like I mentioned, didn't count to co-op, but uh, just introduced me to um, some of that engineering uh, work in, in, in a career. So yeah, going, then going into co-op in my second year, I actually had some experience to, to build on that in addition to our, to our project. So um, personally, I can't comment on volunteering. Um, if, um, if there may be potential opportunities, um, pers yeah, like I said, personally, I've pursued, um, yeah, technical jobs uh, beyond co-op terms as well. Uh, anything from your side, Matt? I would kind of reiterate what Thomas said. Uh, I know there's some companies that even if you don't have a specific co-op, if you do have some time off, they are willing to take on, say, summer students. So I think those are opportunities that you can always look at if there's not a specific paid co-op opportunity. And uh, just notice another question in the chat. How much of the project-based learning in the program, along with your theory you learned, came in hand, uh, came while working on your work terms? It was a lot of stuff. And I think it's actually more than you really even notice when you're working. Um, I think the biggest part where I noticed that was in talking with the people that were working in the full-time positions and your ability to understand the different work that they're doing just based off what you've learned. So the biggest thing for me was probably in my co-ops that stands out was the hands-on side. So when you're trying to build this, when, we, when we're trying to build our projects, that really helps me understand when I'm designing it, what I need to be considering it's one of the big things and obviously stress analysis and understanding safety that you need to include in your designs. I think those are the biggest things that I take took from the projects and the theory and put into my work term. Um, Thomas, was there anything else that you can think of? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll jump right off that. The hands-on is really very useful. Um, the, one, the one project I worked on, we had a new new design of an uh, office chair arm. So I'm, I'm referencing to my, uh, the chair I'm sitting in, but can't see the arm. But uh, so they need to develop new instructions for operators to assemble those uh, in the manufacturing area. So I got some, some of the prototype parts from our project manager and essentially had to sort out uh, an order. I had an exploded view of a CAD model. So I kind of saw the hierarchy of different parts that had to go on uh, before others, uh, but otherwise uh, it, it was simply a design at that point. So uh, from scratch, I had to figure out which, which pieces were best to go on first, different springs or screws or other snap parts that go on and slide them all together. So uh, uh, I developed that and then brought that to our um, operators assembling arms and the feedback from them was actually so helpful as well because they are there assembling arms uh, daily. So just some of the similarities between maybe what uh, existing components um, that they're working with and what's on this new arm. Uh, so just yeah, uh, getting that feedback and being able to uh, get in there and uh, develop some of those instructions. So yeah, that, again, yeah, the hands-on, very, very beneficial. Uh, I don't think there's, I don't see any other questions. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Um, 
guess we can give one one final call if there are any other yeah. Tom, that's, any that's just, yeah. just a suggestion or, or a comment and, and maybe put a uh, a bug in some of the faculty's ears uh, with regard to running future capstone projects uh, and, and competitions. In the real world, obviously, you're not doing this in isolation. You, you've got uh, uh, a marketing department and a finance group and and uh, IT group and and somebody else helping you work on a on a project. Uh, why couldn't we canvas uh, students from marketing department, students in in business, students in IT, students in the graphic designs area that that would join your teams? They would get marks for their particular course by doing their function in the team. And truly, you'd have a, a, an interdisciplinary team approach to a concept that you're designing or a product that you're making. Yeah, so, that's <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be a bit, yeah, it's a very interesting concept. Yeah, yeah, like you've said, that that's the reality when you're you're mm -hmm. on your co-op term and yeah, again, going into your career afterwards. So um yeah, I think that would be really interesting. I, I can comment, let's say, from the uh, engineering team side. I know um, I got in contact with some design students on the Dune campus. So one of them created our our logo. Um, we had some other students from the uh, ESET Architecture, Construction, Engineering Technology Program. They were part of our team as well, uh, helping with uh, the concrete side. Um, so yeah, to exactly to that point, having that diverse set of students across the campus. Um, I think, yeah, that would be a very, very interesting opportunity to explore and just, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, cross over all those disciplines to complete one large task or project. Right. Sorry, did that answer your question or? Yeah, as it is, I'm, <laughs> I'm just thinking, uh, how would we implement that wow. as another issue? But, uh, <laughs> That means some some work on our part on as to how we coordinate that with other schools. Oh, well, for sure, yeah. Uh, looks like we had one more question jump in here from Sylvia. Are there scholarships available? Uh, internally, yes. I actually just applied to some of those this term. Uh, our uh, on campus uh, like general applications. Um, there are some specific ones, uh, not all of them totally applied to me specifically. So there is just a general form application and they, uh, they evaluate you based on, um, I guess, financial need and such. So uh, I haven't heard from back from that. But yeah, uh, at Conestoga, there are uh, scholarships as well. There's always, of course, uh, third party ones as well. There's so many different Canadian scholarships that are available to students. Um, I think you always hear that so much money goes unclaimed in a year. So yeah, there's definitely, definitely scholarships out there to support your uh, academics. Any, uh, any comment on it from your side, Matt? Uh, I think the biggest thing kind of go with that is, yeah, there's so much that goes unclaimed and you can't get any money if you don't apply. So there's no harm in applying for these scholarships. You never know what's going to end up uh, coming your way. No problem. Uh, without, if, unless anything else comes up, I think that uh, concludes our pres presentation for the day. Um, thank you for everybody for joining and listening in. Um, hopefully you learned a lot about project-based engineering and all their project-based learning, sorry, and kind of all the uh, facets that go into it and the opportunities available to students. Thank you, Tony. See you. Have a great day.